I'm used to using the original Venice and I'm, I would say I'm pretty much an advocate of that camera. The opportunity to use this is actually a really fantastic one because it's a real test. And that's, I mean, that's essentially what this is, is that we wanted to, we've, we've designed it so that we're effectively testing this camera for the very first time in a, in a sort of real kind of filmmaking scenario set up. So, so in, in a sense, what we're doing is we are putting it through its paces on a set. And action. Using, you know, actors with a piece of drama um, with all of the, the issues and problems that may come with that. It's when she turns around fully, in other words, time pressures, uh, move, having to move quite quickly in terms of light and those things. So, so I really wanted to see how the camera would perform in that context because that's essentially how I would use it. Can you make a transition between this and that? Sure. And is it going to handle the... When the first rushes came in, um, obviously the, the contrast ratio on a lot of the shots is, is massive in, in a 709 or a standard dynamic range environment. Um, you think, well, there go the highlights, there go the shadows. And then you start grading the material and everything came back. So all the detail in the shadows was there, all the details in the highlights was there. I think I've had two instances of clipping where we were probably 25 plus stops of latitude in the scene. This is the first time I've ever used that larger sensor, the 8.6K, and we're, we were lucky enough to get some anamorphic lenses that will really, so, you know, for the full cinematic effect, that really utilize that whole sensor. In comparison, to the uh, original, it's uh, it, yeah, no, it's much lighter. It's much lighter, uh, and it, it, it yeah, it just feels much easier to set up. We're using the Cook Anamorphics, which are probably the heaviest lens you can get at the moment that will cover the, an eight point six uh, uh, sensor, and uh, yeah, it makes it makes it feasible. So, in terms of power consumption, uh, the new Venice seems to be. <laughs> Remarkable. I was, I was expecting to be changing in between each flight, but no, uh, we're landing, we've done two flights and I've still got 50% left on the batteries and that's been powering the gimbal, the camera, um, the video link and the lens, lens control as well as, you know, everything else. It's a much more compact package within the gimbal. You know, the weight itself, I can keep the whole gimbal down to under 15 kilos and that's with lens control, um, a Cobham video link and uh, the whole camera package. The new Venice just makes flying it on a drone possible. It's going to last for ages in the air. It's got eight NDs that are optically true built into it, which is astonishing. Okay, okay. and then the next, next ND up, open up to 1.8. The ISOs have been bumped up in both instances, so it does, uh, it enables me to shoot a higher speed if needs be in low, low light levels, which is something that wasn't really an option before. So, so that for me essentially is the, is the big gain. The other shot that really sort of blew my mind was coming from a, an almost pitch black corridor into full light. And there's always a, a part of the, the scene where you, you come from the darkest darks into the very low part of the darks or the, the low mids, and you always tend to see noise in the shadows and in that area. And it's always problematic and it, it tends to do nasty things to skin tone and all sorts of other problems. So I, I always sort of get a shudder down my spine whenever I see those kind of shots, knowing that I've got to kind of grade them. So that one, once we balanced it a little bit and just brought up the blacks, all of a sudden it just started singing. And you're like, well, that's unusual. I haven't seen that before from a from a camera and a codec. 